Welcome back to the GCTV studio and welcome back to the Longines Global Champions to a Super Grand Prix as we look to bring down the curtain on the LGCT season. And it has been a remarkable opening round already. Seven out of clear, or seven out of 16 clear, eight falls and one unfortunate and very uncharacteristic 12 from Philip Weishaupt. Let's show you the results at the end of the opening round to give you a look into how things stand at the moment and a few surprises, a few rather interesting placements in the arena. Firstly, Andreas Skal on Dark Deluxe. We spoke about Dark Deluxe this season and how impressive he has been. Well, now all of a sudden he leads in the quickest clear after round one. Julien Epayard, many people's favorite for today. Uh, Jessica Springsteen on Don Juan van Adonkohova looking absolutely outstanding. And what a fairy tale this would be for Peter Fredriksen and the 17 year old Catch Me Not. He too is clear. Amongst that group of fours, Harry Smolders, your LGCT champion, Edwina Tops Alexander, a former LGCT winner and Super Cup winner as well. And Christian Kukuk on the very young, just 10 year old Simal doing very well on a score of just four. And Henrik von Ackermann, let's not forget, Henrik von Ackermann, a previous LGCT Super Grand Prix champion on King Edward, furious with himself after taking a rail down and having four penalties. Is he still in the mix? Are any of those eight riders on four still in the mix? It might be quite unlikely with seven out of 16 clear. Andreas Skau, your leader at the end of round one. We caught up with him. Andreas, you are the fastest clear after round one. Talk me through it. Yeah, I, I, I know with this horse, with his stride, that I can leave a lot out. I normally need to do it uh, because otherwise I have a time fault. Uh, now he's so strong in the body and he is so sharp on the jump, so he also do the jumps faster. And then when I leave uh, straight, uh, sorry, strides out, then uh, yeah, I save time. Going into that arena with him, what was the atmosphere like? No, oh, great. I mean, trotting in there, I could just feel how he grew uh, five centimeters. He looked up and, and said, uh, let's do this. And he delivered on the day. You managed to keep him calm and focused, though. Yeah, he's, uh, he has the routine for it, and it only makes him sharper. You're going into round two. You will be the last to jump. What is your plan? How do you play that? OK, we for sure need to follow a lot what's happening and so. And uh, I think in the end, uh, look at, at how fast Julian and the other guys uh, go. Uh, with him, I, I can do a little bit like I did now, leave some strides out, and uh, then we hope for the best. Can you start to dream? No, oh, we, we have to, so uh, I do indeed. Well done. Thank you. Imagine how that smile will grow if Andreas Skau, who holds on to the provisional lead, continues to hold on to it by the end of round two, which is still to come later tonight. We cross live to Frederick de Bakker, still in the commentary box with our commentary cam. Frederick de Bakker, this is not what I was expecting at the end of round one. Andreas Skau looks as equally shocked, but interesting score lines, interesting placements. Let's get some opening reaction from you. A really, really intriguing opening round. Yeah, intriguing is absolutely the right way to describe this, Mark. Um, like you said, seven clears, um, eight on four penalties. It's a very open game still to come in that uh, second round. But the clears from Skau and especially the pace from Skau was impressive. The clear from Salates, I mean, where did that come from? The horse has never jumped bigger than a meter 55 class, which, which it has never cleared before, Mark. And then goes clear in a meter 65 class. I mean, where does that come from? It's so outrageous. plenty of yeah, plenty of, of, of things to talk about and that, that were surprising. But it's mainly the fact that for the first time in five years, that this first round or the second round is actually still so wide open. So much can still happen. Frederick, if we take a look at the names of the riders that are inside that group of fours, the likes of Henrik von Eckermann, the likes of Harry Smolders, the likes of Christian Kukuk, Edwina Tops Alexander, etc. They'll be hoping to have some form of a lifeline. But out of those seven clears still to follow, are we suggesting that maybe that those with the fence down, are they still in this? Or is the winner amongst those seven clears? It would really surprise me that we do not see a double clear here tonight, especially with seven clears already on the board. It's all up to Vizzani about what he's going to build, but I do not believe that nobody will jump double clear. That basically means that those other riders on four penalties that they are riding are jumping for second and third place. For podium, maybe, but for second and third place. Frederick, you walked the course. We had uh, Peter Voss as well get out and walk the course. It seemed like the reaction was that, much like we've seen in the Global Champions League over the last two days, that this is going to be big, it is going to be technical, it is going to be testing. Are you surprised by 7 out of 16 clears from what you walked? 
I am. I absolutely am. And I'll tell you something else. I'm actually surprised um, that we don't have more. Because if you think, if you look back at the falls that we've seen, there's a few riding, riding mistakes in there. And that means that if we saw perfect riding, that we would have had a lot more. So some riders are going to beat themselves up for the choices that they made. Alma made a fantastic choice with his inside turns so he could add uh, left and right. But others um, made choices that they will blame themselves for. Faults that they will blame themselves for. Riders taking it on the chin. Right, Ferry Tabaka, thank you very much. We'll catch up with him again later as we continue to build up to round two coming up a little bit later on tonight. Let's start looking at some of those reactions then at some of those riders. Then Frederick already pointed out the fact of Sana Tesa, the young Dutch woman coming into today's Grand Prix, not with Conquidam, that wonderful pairing that we've become used to expectation has been so high. We've become used to success. Instead, she comes here tonight with a nine-year-old cum laude, goes on and jumps clear, as Frederick pointed out. Out. Let's hear from the incredibly talented young Sana Tesa. Sana, that was unbelievable. I it mean, was impossible. <laughs> you said to me earlier in the week you didn't have a huge amount of faith to going in today, but just talk me through that. What's, in, what's going through your head? Um, yeah, through my head uh, a lot and also nothing because I had no. I was already happy if I would make it to the finish line. Because I think it's a good horse, but like no experience. He's nine years old. He started jumping when he was seven, like did 10 shows before he was seven. And last week we jumped our four, first four star Grand Prix with five down. <laughs> That's unbelievable. He's never jumped to 160 course either. No. Never been clear at 155. No. He's just gone in there and done a very classy round. Yeah, n never been clear at 155 because he jumped only one. And that was last week and he was so impressed that he did it, but I had a few down because he had no idea what was going on. And in just a few days time, he learned from it and he jumps clear and it won 65. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Surely this gives you huge confidence going into round two. Yes, I still expect to have a few down in the second round because if you don't expect too much, it only can go better. But this is already something, so my day is already made. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. She must be one of my favorite riders to interview. It's the candidness, it's the open and honest approach of Sana Tesa, and the pure humility of the young rider as well makes her an exceptional rider to speak to post-reaction. And she says what has been achieved here already in round one is impossible. Well, can the impossible happen again in round two for Sana Tesa? We will find out. Now, Julien Epeyard, an interesting horse choice. Many people wondering whether or not Donatello was the correct choice for the LGCT Super Grand Prix. Dubai Duceda comes in for today's LGCT Super Grand Prix and living up to arguably one of the favorites title. Julien Epeyard jumps clear and does so in a good time as well. Looking very good for round two. Let's hear from the Frenchman. Julien, that was a very quick, clear round. It looked easy, but tell me from a rider's perspective, from your perspective, what was it like in there? Yeah, it's not easy course. It's, um, it's a nice to ride, a uh, very smooth course. Uh, yeah, technical, big, uh, the atmosphere here, the, the fences, everything is a bit different than every weekend. So yeah, I'm very happy uh, for the first one. It's no surprise you did a quick round, you, we know that you're fast. Going into the second round then, what is the plan? Yeah, we have a good start already. After we see a lot of good and fast riders are coming, uh, I will see when the first one finish how I go. If I can go last, for sure, it's, it's better. But uh, okay, will you we'll be, see. Will you be watching the others if you are last to go? Yes, of course. Uh, it's an advantage to go last. I was thinking about this a little bit, but the, the mare is naturally quickly, quick. So yeah, we we'll see. Well done. Thank you. Julian Epayard may well now be arguably the favourite as one of the most aggressive riders going into round two on a clear, but there's still a handful of riders, as Frederick and I pointed out, seven out of 16 going clear in round one. It does mean that maybe that large group of eight riders, including Henrik von Ackermann, Smolders, Alman, Tops Alexander, are they then perhaps just a reach too far for the title with a four down already? Speaking of Henrik von Ackermann and King Edward, former winners here already, two-time champion, 
champion in 2023 in the LGCT season. And any time that King Edward and Henrik von Ackermann step into a ring, they are always going to be seen as one of the most dangerous combinations. Many expecting this pair again to be lightning quick and be clear today. Now, fortunately for the Swede, it was not to be. And before we get ahead of ourselves and criticize too much on just a single rail going down because of that heavy clear rate in round one, you do wonder if those teams and those combinations on four are going to come back. It's the E15 plank that goes down. Super light goes down. And again, Henrik von Ackermann expecting to go clear, expecting to do so in a very fast time as well. And we have been told that he was very, very upset with himself at the end of that round, making his way out of the tunnel, back into the warm-up area. So high is the expectation, so high are the levels of expectation for Henrik von Ackermann that just a single rail going down is one too many for the fantastic Swede. To be fair, him and King Edward hold it together beautifully at the end of the round, making the last few lines here coming down over the Liverpool into what then will be the penultimate line and eventually holds it to just the single rail that goes only to the four penalties, comes up to the final fence, gets over global champions and wraps it up for the 71.50 and four penalties. Henrik von Ackermann, unfortunately, missing out ever so slightly. So does Harry Smolders, in fact. Let's show you what the 2023 LGCT season winner on Monaco. Big discussion around the horse this week. And again, Rob Hoekstrup, the manager of the Paris Panthers, has been speaking to GCTV extensively about the thought behind the selection about Eurikas in the Global Champions League and now in Monaco for the LGCT Super Grand Prix. Harry Smolders, 13th to go. Good draw from him from the computer that set up the starting order. Harry Smolders gets over E15, a little bit playful from Monaco, the 14-year-old gilding. And now, again, is where you expect the season champion to really kick it into gear. Looked really, really smooth in the opening stages. Approaches BMW and has no trouble with BMW. And here you are starting to get the impression that it is going to be yet another clear for the season for Harry Smolders and for Monaco. Continues looking good. And as he approaches into the final 25 seconds of the round to the astronomical clock, gets over that, no trouble. Looking smooth is Harry Smolders. And here now coming into the combination, gets out, makes the final rollback into this penultimate line. And the fault coming so incredibly late for Harry Smolders, frustratingly now thinking this is going to be a clear. Approaches the final global champion's fence and right at the end it goes down. You can see Rob Hoekstrup a little bit disappointed. Harry Smolders showing a little bit of emotion on the face as well there, knowing that that was an unlikely fall, an uncharacteristic fall. And how dearly is that going to cost him? Let's show you then what the results look like at the end of the opening round of the Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix. Andrea Scow, huge surprise as the fastest of the clears. Michael van der Flurten and Julien Epayard separated by just 0.3 of a second. Jessica Springsteen very much in the hunt. Peter Fredriksen and Katrin Ackermann. And Sana Tesa on cum laude, absolutely outstanding. Then we enter the falls. As mentioned, Von Eckermann and Max Kuna up to Jaco Blue. Harry Smolders, David Vill on My Prince. Bertram Allen and Pacino Almero taking a rail down. As did Alman, Edwina Tops Alexander, Christian Kukuk, and unfortunately for Philip Weishaupt and Kobe. As we said, a very uncharacteristic 12 takes the German out of contention immediately for the second round. So we take a quick break. When we return, we start to take a look at how round two will look. What has been put together by Uliana Vizzani for that second round to test the 16 best riders in the world for tonight's biggest prize, the 2023 Longines Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix. Stay with us here on GCTV. We take a break. When we back, round two of the Grand Prix. <laughs> 